Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, in this video we are going to learn how to create our own wind zones that can apply effects to rigid bodies. Now, I know that Unity has wind zones built in, but the built-in wind zones only affect terrain. So in this video, we are going to find a way to continually add force to an object in a given direction and within a confined area. So let's get started. For this tutorial, we are going to have to make several script updates, and we are going to have to make some level updates as well. So let's get started with the level updates first. Now, the first thing that we need to do is add a new empty game object. So if I just right-click, create empty, and let's actually rename this to wind area. And we need to tag this, and you'll see why in a little bit, but let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, I've already got wind area as a tag set up, but to add a tag, you just click on add tag, click the plus icon, and then write out your tag. And then once you've added your tag, just click on the tag that you want to apply to this game object. Now let's actually zero out the position of this game object and now we're going to add a component and we're going to add a box collider. Let's set it to trigger. And now we actually want to change the size of this box collider because as you can see right now it's not very big and this is basically going to be our wind area. So once an, a game object with a rigid body enters into this trigger collider then we can start applying forces to it and that's a really small wind area so we're going to make it a lot bigger so let's make the x size something like uh, 12 let's go 16 16 and we'll do the z as 16 as well and let's set the y to 5 okay that looks pretty good so that's all the level updates that we can make right now. So let's go ahead and save our scene. And now we need to create two new scripts. And the first script we're going to create is a C sharp script. And we're just going to call this one wind area. I'm calling this wind area instead of wind zone, because if you call it wind zone, then you'll run into conflicts with Unity's wind zones. And we're going to create another C sharp script. And we can just call this one ball. So let's go ahead and open these up in our editor here. Now I'm gonna fill out the wind area script first because it's actually really simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the start and update methods and we're going to add a public float strength and we're gonna add a public vector three direction. Okay, and that's all we need for this script. Very simple. Basically, the strength is how much force we need to apply, and the direction is fairly obvious. It's just basically the direction we want to push the objects in. So let's go ahead and save our wind area script, and we'll go back to our ball script now. And inside of our ball script, I'm just going to copy the destroyer script. So if I open this up, and now just copy everything here, and now paste it over the ball script. If you haven't seen the destroyer script video, I'll be sure to link to that video in, in the description below so that you guys can check that out as well. Okay, so we have to do a couple of things to our ball script. So up top, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a couple of new variables. So we're going to add a public bull in wind zone, and we're going to just set that to false. Next, we're going to create a public game object wind zone and we're going to need a reference to our rigid body so we can just say rigid body rb okay so we are going to need a start function now so let's add that in void start and inside of our start function all we're going to do is rb is equal to get component and make sure you specify that we are getting a rigid body component. So for this script, we actually have to add three new methods. We're gonna add a fixed update, an on trigger enter, and an on trigger exit. So let's go ahead and add the trigger enter and trigger exit. So let's do enter first, void, on trigger, enter, and we're gonna take a collider coal. And now we want to do a quick if check. So we're gonna say if, coal.gameobject.tag is equal to wind area 
then the first thing we're going to do is say wind zone is equal to cold dot game object and we're going to set in wind zone equal to true okay now we need to do our trigger exit so let's say void on trigger exit again we're going to need a collider coal and we're just going to do another if check so if coal dot game object dot tag is equal to wind area then we're going to set in wind zone equal to false okay pretty simple scripting there now we have one final method that we need to add which is the fixed update so let's just add that under our update and we're just going to say void fixed update and inside of our fixed update we're going to say if in wind zone then we're going to do an rb dot add force and we're going to add force based on wind zone dot get component make sure we are getting the wind area component dot direction times our wind zone dot get component again specify wind area whoops dot strength okay so that's a little bit sloppy the way that's being called right there but just for the sake of time I'm not going to um, get references to those directly okay so that should do it for this script let's go ahead and save ball and go back to our level now the first thing that we actually need to oops hmm oh, okay let's change out our quotes here Well, that is just annoying. There we go. Now let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. I used the wrong quotes accidentally. That's my bad. Now let's make sure that we actually have our wind area set up. Looks like I actually have two for some reason. That's interesting. That must have been left over from earlier testing. So we've got this set up. We've got the tag set up, the trigger set up. So let's go to our project, prefabs and select our spheres. Now we're going to actually add component and we're going to add our ball component. Okay, cool. Now let's see if, if you noticed when I selected all of these, it's saying components that are only on some of the selected objects cannot be multi-edited. So let's see what the difference is here. Hmm. This one has a box collider. That's interesting. Let me remove those. So let's save our scene again, and now let's do some testing. So actually, let's go to our wind area, and let's set up some values for this. Oh, no. We do need to add our wind area script. Very important. We have to have that. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a strength of 5 in our direction. Let's see. Our camera seems to be pointing this way. So let's just go... Uh, forward in the Z. See how that does. Now let's do a little bit of testing. Very cool. So as you can see that red ball was pushed off and now all of these are going to be pushed in that general direction when we instantiate more of them. So it's just sort of, this is just applying a force, pushing the balls in that direction pretty easily. You know, and that's that's a pretty strong wind. We can actually, let's see what happens if we just make it crazy, like go by 10 and see what happens to them. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, these are pushing the, the uh, balls pretty hard now, pushing them way, way off the platform very quickly. And you can, of course, reduce the strength and now once it's reduced, you can see that they're all sort of rolling now. They're not necessarily just flying off. And you can also add to the direction. So if we do one in the X and one in the Z, they should move diagonally now. Yeah, so they should all basically be heading for that corner. Yeah, very cool stuff. Very simple script. 
you know, really easy to get it implemented and it can really add a lot to your game. You know, uh, let's say you're creating a golfing game, for example, then it's really easy to create something like this, you know, that you can just have a collider and add force and then basically just simulating wind. Okay, coders, that's going to do it for this tutorial. We are, of course, going to continue developing this series and adding more and more scripts as we go along throughout this series. Hopefully, we're adding stuff that you find interesting. If you do find it interesting, be sure to drop us a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.